this is Nancy with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. I want to show you today how to finish up a quilt with a facing instead of a binding. Now bindings are what we do on our quilts most of the time and I've done three or four videos on different ways to do that. But this would be a facing. Now the quilt that I have here on the table is the quilt that I want to do the facing with. So I did some of the machine quilting on a Facebook Live. You can maybe find that someday. But now the quilt is done and to me it just doesn't seem like a binding would work. So before I show you how to do that, let me show you what a facing can look like on some other quilts that I've done. So this is a quilt that was actually made by my friend Cheryl, but I did the quilting and Cheryl and I both put these fabulous blingy things on. And, and just so you know, it is in the private collection of Gina now. So on the back side of this, you can see the facing. Now, this was done with two fabrics that were exactly the same, but I'm hoping that you can see here how this is curved. That's the facing. The reason we chose to do a facing is because I did not want this quilt to be straight. I wanted the edge of the quilt to have this kind of cool scalloping idea that when it, that kind of mimicked what I had quilted on the quilt. So usually that's when I'll do a facing. When I look at a quilt, I don't want the quilt to be square. I want it to be some other shape. So that's what we did here. Now on the next quilt, same idea. So you can see that this quilt is definitely not straight on the edges. I added some of these bubbles to the quilt and it is kind of a wonky quilt anyhow. It's kind of set on kitty wampus instead of on point. But this one, because I had those bubbles, actually, let me pull it from this side. You can see the facing. So here is the actual facing that we did. And this is why we needed to do it because I wasn't going to do a binding all the way around there. Could I have? Yeah, but that would have not been fun at all. That would have been quite difficult. So for this kind of a quilt, that's usually why I'll do the facing. I'm going to bring that raccoon quilt up and I'm going to show you the steps. So to start with, you need to decide what kind of shape you want your quilt to be. Now, traditionally, facings are used on quilts like the ones that I showed you, where they're just kind of curvy edges and a facing just makes it look really cool. But on a quilt like this, it just, I just thought it needed it. I just think it'll be cool if it's got a facing. So the first thing I did is I took my really big ruler and I tried to find out what was squat, straight and square. So just laid it down. I was like, all right, I could get to here. So I, I marked here with a um, pencil and a chalk because I had light fabric and dark fabric. Then I moved it over. So then I was marking on this side. And you'll see here that I am having to cut off a little bit of the raccoon, but that's okay. I think that it's going to look more like he's in a window, which honestly is a little bit of a scary thought to me, but it's going to look good in the end. And then took it up to the top. After you decide how big you want it, and you've decided with your square what you, shape you want, then I needed to mark the back of the quilt so I could see it. So on those drawn lines, I just used a dark thread in the top and in the bottom so that I knew where the edge was that I needed. And so no matter what shape you're doing, so on that pretty red one, I first stitched that curve on the quilt so that I could see it on the back side. And that'll be explained in a minute as to why. Now I'm going to take my backing fabric. In this case, I'm using the same fabric that was on the back of the quilt. And this is a batik, but you want to put the fabric right sides down onto the front of the quilt. So this is a batik, so you really can't tell what is the front side and what is not smooth that out. But this is the good side of the batik to the good side of the quilt. Now I'm just going to put just a few pins in this to hold on to it just for a little bit as I go to flip it around. Now if you're doing a facing on a very large quilt, technically you can create just an empty border. So one time I did it on a really large quilt and I took just a piece of muslin and around that muslin I pieced what I wanted my facing fabric to be just kind of like a big 10 inch border around, around the muslin. And then when I did this, the muslin was in the center and then I had the pretty fabric on the edge and I'd explain how to get rid of the muslin in a bit. So I've got it pinned in place. Now I'm going to flip it over to the wrong side of the quilt. Here is the line that I had stitched. I'm going to now put pins 
to hold that. So I can grab these guys from the back side. And I'm going to pin this all the way around. And when I come back, we're going to take it to my sewing machine. So I have the facing pinned to the front of the quilt all the way around, and this is the line that I'm going to sew it on. So now I'm going to go to my machine, and we're going to sew around this line. Now, if you don't have, now my I have a FAF which has a built-in walking foot back here, so I do not have to put a walking foot on my machine, but if you don't have a machine like this that has a walking foot, I recommend that at this point you put your walking foot on because you are going through the top, the backing, the batting, and the facing. So all of those things. And whenever you're going through a lot of fabric like that, you want to be sure that you use your walking foot. So I'm going to take my time and go all the way around this. So I have the facing and the quilt pinned together. Again, right sides together, it's so important. And now I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew on that dark line that I first originally stitched that was really just kind of like a, a marker to show me where to sew. Go into my machine, I'm just gonna start right here. Now keep in mind, I've got a FAF sewing machine and my FAF sewing machine has a built-in walking foot back here. I can take it off and put it on. If you don't have a machine that has a built-in walking foot like that, you're gonna be sure that you put on your walking foot. Your walking foot's gonna be needed here because it needs to be sewing through the quilt top, the batting, the backing, and the facing. When I come back, I'll show you what the next step is. So I've stitched all the way around it, and now it's time to trim. So when you're trimming it, you want to trim about a little bit more than a quarter inch from the stitched line. So here's my stitch line. I'm gonna just be cutting with a nice strong pair of scissors all the way around through all of those layers. When you come to a corner, you want to be sure that you cut off the corner at a diagonal, but do not cut through the stitches. The stitches is right here. Don't cut through the stitches, but continue to trim all the way around the entire quilt. I've gone all the way around it, trimmed all of my corners. Now, this is where I was talking about if you were doing a large quilt where you could actually take a big piece of muslin and then put a border around it of the facing fabric that you want because the next step is to cut out the center. So if this were the large quilt, you would be cutting out that big piece of muslin. This is not a large quilt, so I'm just gonna grip it and start cutting. I like to have not straight lines on the back. I like for there to be some curve to it, not so much artistically speaking, but because it's easier to hand applique it if you do that. So I'm gonna trim it, and I'm not gonna be real careful about the shape I'm quilt trimming, but I am going to trim, trim it kind of like with some curve to it, because that's gonna make those bias edges easier to do the hand stitching. And again, this is real, a lot easier when you have a nice sharp pair of scissors to do this with. All right, now the magic happens. Now you can see Mr. Raccoon again. There he is peeking out through the little facing. But now I'm gonna take and turn the quilt. So being sure I get right into the corner, I'm getting my thumbnail right into that corner that I had trimmed so I can turn him and try to get a really sharp corner there. And then sometimes I'll take my little, um, there's a little wooden tool, I can't remember what it's called, and I'll take that to really pop that corner out. And 
And if you've got lots of curves, like on the one that I did that actually had those little bubbles on the outside of it, I did have to do some more trimming, kind of take notches out of it so that I could get that to turn. Now I'm going to take my iron. It's nice and hot. And I'm going to, from the back side is usually how I do it, I'm going to press this. Give it some good steam as I go. Because I'm bringing that to the back. And what this is actually doing is it is folding a quarter of an inch of the quilt to the back. So right here on the edge, I actually have like right here is just the quilt, just the quilt. And right there for a quarter of an inch is that quilt folded over. So that's kind of thick right there. So you want to be sure that you press that with a lot of really good steam and be sure that you bring the facing all the way to the back. So I can almost like I can just see a smidgen of the actual quilt top right there on the corner. So I'm going to go all the way around the quilt, taking my time pressing it. So I've gone all the way around it. I've got them pressed pretty good. Now you get to see how cool he looks from the front side. There he is. So his edges are turned under. So for me, it kind of makes it look like an acrylic painting where there's no frame. You know, it just goes around the back edge. That picture actually continues. And that's what it does. But you're not quite done yet. Because it's on the edge here and it's folded under, you need to do some stay stitching. So here is the quilt top that I said was folded over that quarter of an inch. We need to do a classic um, seamstress trick and we need to stitch that facing, the, the fold to the facing. You don't want to go through all the layers. If you do that, you're going to take away that look that it creates by taking it to the, um, to the back. So I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm just going to make that stitch right there. So as you're at the sewing machine, you want to try to get as far to the corner as you can. You will not be able to get all the way to the corner. You just want to try and move the facing as much as you can to get it in place. And then you're stitching down the face, the folded part of the quilt to the facing. get about to here. I can't, you can't get all the way to the corner. Then cut off and then you do that all the way around the quilt. And that's going to help keep it folded in place. So I will take and get my iron out again and continue that fold, that pressing all the way around. And then I'm going to take this edge and by hand, I'm going to hand applique that. So I would obviously pin it in place, maybe use some Roxanne's glue to keep it in place. And all the way around it, turn it under and do a hand applique stitch so he would be finished. And then when he's done, I would put a sleeve on this. I would definitely want this one to be a sleeve because he's obviously a wall hanging, but he would be finished. And they really look like a work of art when you do the facing technique. So again, a facing isn't for every quilt. I think it's fabulous on what I would call an art quilt or quilts that have curved edges to them. I hope you like that idea and I'd love to see some of the ones that you make. If you'd like to join our Facebook page, we have a Facebook page that's called Nancy's Show and Share and that's where any of the um, viewers of the show can go and just share some of the quilts that we're making. I hope that you subscribe to our channel already so that you know when we're putting out a new video. So like our channel, like the video maybe, um, go subscribe to it and then be sure you get onto Facebook so that everybody can see what you've been working on. Have a great day.